Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial. In this video, we learn about third silo theorem. We prove that statement. Let capital G be a finite group and let P be a prime number. Then the number of silo P subgroups, then the number of silo P subgroups of capital G are NP. Generally, this NP is denoted by 1 plus KP. And that divides, that divides order of G means this NP or 1 plus KP divides order of G and also satisfies NP is congruent to 1 modulo P. It is very trivial. If NP is equals to 1 plus KP, then it is congruent to 1 modulo P. That's it. 1 plus KP is congruent to 1 mod P. Right. Let us prove this theorem. Capital G be a finite group and P be a prime number such that p power n divides mod g and p power n plus 1 does not divide mod g. Observe that. g is a finite group. p is a prime number such that p power n divides mod g and p power n plus 1 does not divide mod g. Now define a silo subgroup. Capital A be the silo p subgroup of g. A is the silo p subgroup. Then automatically order of A is equals to p power n. Order of A is equals to p power n. Right? We, de we decompose. We decompose the group capital G into double cosets. We decompose capital G into double cosets. What is mean by decompose? The group capital G can be written as a union of the double cosets. The group capital G can be written as a union of the double cosets. We know that the set of all possible double cosets forms a partition of the finite group, forms a partition of the group. That's why G, any finite group can be written as union of its union of its double cosets. So, right? So G is equals to union X A X A. Union X A X A. Here, capital A X capital A is nothing but a double coset generated by X. So this G can be written like this. Again, this union X can be expressible like this. You observe that union of A X A union again union of a x a. but what is the difference here x belongs to normalizer of a here x does not belong to normalizer of a the above expression i mean this one can be expressible in this form because according to x belongs to normalizer of a and according does not belongs to normalizer of a so g can be written as a finite group g can be written as Union of A X A where X belongs to N of A union union of A X A where X does not belongs to N of A. Now, from this expression, we can write the order of the group. Order of the group G is equals to order of the group G is equals to. It is nothing but order of the first set plus order of the second set up from the above expression. Order of the first set and order of the second set. You observe that here X belongs to N of A. Here x belongs to n of a. If x belongs to n of a, if x belongs to n of a, then order of union a x a, order of union a x a is equals to order of n of a, order of n of a. This is very, very important point to remember. You observe that. x belongs to n of a, then order of union a x a is equals to order of n of a. That's it. That's it. After that, this term can be written as summation x does not belong to n of a. Union can be written outside the order. Then union can be written as summation. Summation x does not belong to n of a. Order of a x a. Order of a x a. Let it be equation number one. So write again. By the definition of double coset. By the definition of double coset. Order of a x a is equals to. By the definition of double coset, order of A x A is equals to order of A, order of A divided by order of A intersection x A x inverse. Actually, this is the definition. Order of A x B, order of A x, the double coset A x B is equals to order of A into order of B divided by order of A intersection x b x inverse order of a intersection x b x inverse in this formula we replace we replace capital b by a we replace b by a that's it order of a x b is equals to order of a order of b divided by order of a intersection x b x inverse 
so by applying this formula by applying this formula order of a inter order of a x a can be written in this form equation number 2 observe that it is very clear the double coset a intersection x a x inverse is a subgroup of a the double coset a intersection x a x inverse is a subgroup of a if it is a subgroup of a then the order of this subgroup is less than the order of the group we know that the order of the subgroup is always less than or equal to the order of the group so order of a intersection x a x inverse is equals to p power m where m less than n where m less than n now using this fact in equation number 2 using this fact in equation number 2 order of a x a is equals to p power n p power n divided by p power m order of a x a is equals to p power n into p power n divided by p power m that is nothing but p power 2 n minus m p power 2 n minus m so this is equation number 3 order of a x a is equals to p power 2 n minus m again let us calculate this since m is less than n m is less than n means m less than or equals to n minus 1 you observe this here n so we have less than here n minus 1 we have less than or equals to now subtract these two terms from 2n if you subtract both the terms from a from an element 2n then this less than or equals to becomes greater than or equals to that's it 2n minus m greater than or equals to 2n minus of n minus 1 this is nothing but 2n minus m is greater than or equals to n plus 1 this is nothing but p power n plus 1 p power n plus 1 divides p power 2n minus m p power n plus 1 divides p power 2n minus m that's it you can observe that 2 square divides 2 square divides 2 cube 2 square divides 2 power 4 by using this example p power n plus 1 divides p power 2n minus m so let us take p power 2n minus m divided by p power n plus 1 is equals to u for example 2 cube by 2 square 8 by 4 8 by 4 you get 2 so like that p power 2n minus m divided by p power n plus 1 is equals to u say so that is by cross multiplication here by cross multiplication p power 2n minus m is equals to u into p power n plus 1 p power 2n minus m is equals to u into p power n plus 1 let it be equation number 4 now using equation 4 in equation 3 what is equation 3 what is equation 3 order of a x a is equals to p power 2n minus m what is equation 4 p power 2n minus m is equals to p power n plus 1 into u that's it now using equation 4 in equation 3 we get equation number 5 that's it order of a x a is equals to u into p power n plus 1 again using equation 5 using equation 5 in equation 1 we get using equation 5 in equation 1 we get this is equation 1 i repeat actually here i repeat that here this is equation number 1 actually so we substitute order of a x a is equals to u p power n plus 1 here so summation here you can observe that here u order of a x a is equals to u into p power n plus 1 summation x does not belongs to n of a summation x does not belongs to n of a does not belongs to n of a is equals to summation u p power n plus 1 summation u p power n plus 1 and x does not belongs to n of a summation is independent of does not belongs to here the term is independent of x so automatically this summation does not influence us that's it that summation does not influence us so we get this step order of g is equals to order of n of a plus u into p power n plus 1 now divide equation 6 on both sides with order of n of a now divide equation 6 on both sides with order of n of a so you get equation number 7 like this order of g divided by order of n of a is equals to here one order of n of a divided by order of n of a you get u into p power n plus 1 divided by order of n of a observe clearly equation 6 is order of g is equals to order of n of a plus u into p power n plus 1 we are dividing with the order of n of a on both sides 
so you get this equation equation number 7 so observe carefully right what is n of a normalizer of the group normalizer of the group normalizer of the group is always subgroup of the group so n of a is a subgroup of g n of a is a subgroup of g by up, g is a finite group by applying the lagrange's theorem the order of the subgroup divides the order of the group the order of the subgroup divides the order of the group by lagrange's theorem so order of n of a divides order of g order of n of a divides order of g what it means order of g divided by order of n of a must be an integer if order of n of a divides order of g then very clearly order of g divided by order of n of a must be an integer 2 square divides 2 cube what it means 4 divides 8 it means 8 by 4 you get 2 very clearly 2 is an integer that's it order of g by order of n of a must be an integer now observe equation 7 carefully this term is an integer the left term the left side term is an integer one is an integer and suppose the left side value is suppose you take 2 and here it is 1 now what is the value of this one you get 2 minus 1 what is 2 minus 1 1 what it means u into p power n plus 1 divided by order of n of a is also an integer is also an integer i repeat this step again observe that suppose this is order of g by order of n of a is an integer is an integer and one is also an integer if you shift this one into left side you get a subtraction of two integers the subtraction of two integers is again an integer is again an integer so order of g divided by order of n of a must be an integer by applying this point from equation 7 u into p power n plus 1 divided by order of n of a is also an integer so let us take u into p power n plus 1 divided by order of n of a is equals to u into p power n divided by order of n of a into p i rearrange that term p power n plus 1 p power n plus 1 can be written as p power n into p so you get simply kp where k is equals to u into p power n order of divided by order of n of a and also this term is divided by p power n this is also divided by p power n so it is obviously true now again from equation 7 using this kp in equation 7 you get this order of g by order of n of a is equals to 1 plus kp let us shift this order of n of a to right side order of g is equals to 1 plus kp into order of n of a therefore this shows us order of this expression shows us for example for example 24 is equals to 6 into 4 it is a known number 6 into 4 what it means 6 divides 24 6 divides 24 that's it that's it Our twenty-one is equals to seven into three. Seven into three. Obviously, seven divides twenty-one. By using this fact, one plus kp divides order of g. One plus kp divides order of g. That's it. One plus kp divides order of g. Where np one plus kp is nothing but np. That is the symbol here. Np is nothing but np is nothing but one plus kp. One plus kp. Therefore, np divides order of g. that's it we require the same thing right we conclude again by second silo theorem by second silo theorem all the silo p subgroups are conjugate by second silo theorem all the p subgroups are conjugate therefore the number of silo subgroups is equals to the number of silo subgroups of g is equals to the number of conjugate subgroups the number of conjugate subgroups are nothing but order of g by order of n of a the number of conjugate subgroups are nothing but the number of conjugate subgroups are nothing but order of g divided by order of n of a therefore the number of silo subgroups of g is equals to order of g divided by order of n of a therefore the number of silo subgroups of g is equals to 1 plus kp which is nothing but 1p in a similar manner order of k 1 plus kp divides order of g which is the required fact which is the required fact in the state this completes the proof of the third silo theorem you observe the statement you observe the statement of third silo theorem 
the number of the number of uh, silo sub p subgroups of gr np are 1 plus kp that's it this 1 plus kp is nothing but order of g divided by order of n of a order of n of a and that 1 plus kp divides order of g that's it which is the required proof wish you all the best